Welcome back to another episode of opening up parts to see what's inside. In this video, we'll be taking a look at this very old circuit board. There doesn't appear to be a date marking anywhere on this board, but as far as I can tell based on the components used, I would estimate it to be in the late 1960s or perhaps early 1970s. One giveaway that this is an older circuit board is based on how the traces are routed. Specifically, the traces here all appear to have been hand drawn and not with the assistance of a CAD software. Another interesting feature of the circuit board, which is probably a remnant of the hand drawing nature, is the border grid. I'm assuming this would have aided with the placement of components both during the circuit drafting and also when installing the components. I came across this board as part of a scrap lot on eBay, and it was actually the reason that I bought it. I noticed these three golden ceramic dips, and my curiosity ultimately got the better of me. I could tell by the logo that they were made by Sylvania, and figured they must be really old based on the rest of the circuit board. Sadly, I could not determine anything based on the numbers on the tops, so I decided to open one up to see if I could learn more. I picked the one that looked to be in the worst shape, which was actually a slightly different part number from the other two. I would normally remove these types of parts with hot air, but I decided just to snip it off so that I didn't risk burning the PCB. These type of parts are typically constructed with two gold-plated metal lids with a ceramic body in between. The top lid is soldered to the body and comes off very easily with just a little bit of heat. There was some interesting corrosion on this part that I haven't noticed on other parts like this. Inside we can see a very simple yet beautiful pink chip. We don't need to zoom in too far to be able to make out all of the circuit elements on this chip. There also appears to be a number of similar circuit groups. The only piece of identifying information on this die is the number 220, which may or may not be useful. From other chips that I've looked at, sometimes chip manufacturers will put the external part number on the die, or it may be an internal part number that only the manufacturer knows the significance of. I'm not exactly sure what happened here, but I swear I didn't touch it when I opened it up. Anyways, at this further zoom level, we can really make out a lot of different details, including imperfections on the top metal layer. Zooming in even further, we can easily see the different layers, but have to adjust focus to be able to see the whole chip. This is probably a good time to take a break and see if we can do any research to find more about this chip. In my research, I was able to find a very nice scan of a Sylvania data book dating back to May of 1966, hosted on the bitsaver.org website. This data book is loaded with information about the Sylvania Universal High Level Logic Integrated Circuit, or SUL for short. Searching further, we see a page that lists out some part numbers and happens to have the number SG220, which corresponds to a quad to input NAND slash NOR gate. The data book also includes a diagram for this part and shows us how the parts are pinned out, so let's see if we can actually trace these circuits out on the die. Based on pinout information on the datasheet and where the pin 1 marker is, I'm pretty confident this is how the part should be pinned out. Zooming in, we can then transpose this pin out to the actual silicon chip and even begin to trace out the power and ground nets. Next, I attempted to trace out some of the parts of the SUL basic circuit which is everything to the right of this diagram. I should note I didn't trace out every circuit element, but I'm pretty sure that's what this is. I then traced this block out on the remainder of the circuit, and it was at this point I was pretty sure this is not a quad to input NAND NOR gate. In fact, it doesn't match any of the diagrams listed, so I decided to open up another part to see if I'd have better luck at identifying it. This one is a very nice green and yellow chip, and I can immediately make out some of the similar SUL basic circuits. Similar to the first chip, this chip also has a number on it, 286-9, which unfortunately is not included in the databook. It's possible that both of these parts are newer than 1966, and as a result, not included in this document. Unfortunately, I have yet to come across a newer version of this data book, either a digital or physical copy. I didn't bother to trace out this chip like I did on the previous one, since I wouldn't be able to confirm my drawings. Tracing out circuits is still something that I'm learning more how to do, and I don't want to trace it out incorrectly. Instead of drawings, please enjoy some more close-up video of this chip.
If there's anyone more knowledgeable in the subject of reverse engineering chips and would like to take a crack at tracing it out, please go right ahead. Or if you know anything else about this chip, please post it down in the comments below. I'd love to make a follow-up video to this in the future once these have been identified one way or another. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.